Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So there was a fair few things that we uh, we had come up in the uh, in the content revealed today for 3.24. I thought instead of just reading through the patch notes like the other probably 50 videos that are going to come up from various different people, I'd sort of pull apart the uh, the reveals and pull out the major items that uh, that we probably want to pay a little bit of attention to. So anyway, let's get into it. Let's have a look at some of the big things that are happening in the 3.24 league that we got announced this morning to us. We're also trying something new this time around. During the Necropolis League, there will be support for the League on the Atlas Passive Tree. Multiple clusters will be there, allowing you to enhance the gameplay, customize it, and even change its behavior in meaningful ways. Okay, so in the patch notes, this sort of comes up in this line here, League-specific Passive Trees. Uh, necropolis clusters will not be so it, there's going to be two separate atlas trees between the standard league and the existing league now the advantage of this it means that you could like super juice up stuff within the league mechanic to make it really cool it's really good with this league mechanic because basically this is a crafting league or a meta crafting league again like a harvest 2.0 sort of thing um harvest slash rog sort of thing but um the other thing is it could also allude to the fact that maybe they're looking at making more consistent content that's going to make its way into the permanent endgame moving forwards. They're going to add it to the Atlas tree and have unique interactions and things like that. So this could be a different change that we'll see moving forwards because this is sort of out there and it hasn't been done previously. Usually it's like the next league that it happens and then they consolidate the tree and whatnot. So this is a good change. I like this. The most difficult and most rewarding content in Path of Exile can be found in uber pinnacle bosses, such as the Maven and the Searing Exarch. Currently, the only way to access these bosses is by allocating specific keystones on the Atlas Passive Tree. While this system offers a nice element of control, it causes a problem. Rewards and access to the non uber variants are now economically priced around the rewards of the uber fights. This means it is wasteful to run the non uber variants instead of simply selling them. Another problem that we noticed is the difficulty jump between the Pinnacle and Uber Pinnacle content was relatively large, and there wasn't obvious content that could bridge this gap. Many players would give up on their characters before being able to defeat the Uber Pinnacle bosses. In 324 we will be making some changes to this. We are removing the keystones that give access to the Uber Pinnacle bosses from the Atlas Tree, and instead we'll be adding a new set of fragments that give you access to this content. Where do you get these fragments? We are adding a new tier of maps, tier 17 maps, which not only give you access to the uber pinnacle content, but also test your characters in new ways. They feature a new set of bosses, uber monsters, and a new tier of modifiers that can roll on the maps. There are five new tier 17 maps in total, with some surprising boss fights at the end. We'll look at a couple today, and the rest you'll have to discover for yourself. First, we have the Citadel map. This map contains an ancient Kalgurin Citadel. You will encounter many expedition monsters as the signature packs throughout the map. At the end, you will fight Uber Uhtred. This is a version of a boss from Expedition League, with all its abilities and mechanics enhanced. Uber Uhtred will even be able to summon two other expedition bosses to aid it during the fight. Secondly, we have the Fortress map. This map is an impregnable fortress, guarded by monsters from the Heist League. At the end, you will encounter an uber version of The Unbreakable. Again, it has enhanced abilities and mechanics you'll have to learn and overcome. Each of the Tier 17 map bosses has a chance to drop a unique item, allowing for some target farming. However, these aren't entirely new unique items. Instead, we've taken other unique items, removing them from the core drop pool, and rebalancing them to fit here. Okay, so some further details around what was just mentioned there in the content reveal from the patch notes. So they sort of talk through this. Uh, yep, Uber Fragment drops. Uh, so tier 17 maps are 20% quality and are unmodifiable, so very similar to the Valdos maps from last league. Uh, there's five new tier 17 maps, which is what they showed there, uh, each with their own bosses. Uh, now they have, they've made some changes to some items as a result, which I would assume would be the total drop pool from those bosses. So Darkseer, unique 
um, scepter, which was usually used in like um, your general scry builds, for example, your shield crush general scry builds actually on the berserker. Um, that this has now been changed and it's a lot more powerful than what it previously was. So it's plus two to all spell skill gems. The other thing that stands out to me here as well, which so they make mention of it in the patch notes, is the change to the Wraith Lord Bone Circlet, which we can see on the screen there. So this is going to give you plus two to num uh to level of all minion skill gems and plus one to maximum number of spectres per socket of ghastly eye jewels. So I reckon we're gonna see Spectre armies this league, most likely, and they're gonna be abusing T17 drops of that particular helm. Um now, the drop rate of that helm, we don't know what it's going to be, but I reckon Spectre builds are pretty much back on the menu, as well as there were elements to be able to collect unique corpses and things like that from the League mechanic as well, just to sweeten the deal. Now, you can't have non-Spectre minions, but who cares about having non-Spectre minions if you, you know, have four extra Spectres, um, if that's in fact how it works, because you can cap out five Spectres and have, like, nine Spectres, um... I haven't played, I'm not a minion expert, but that's my understanding of playing Spectres for a few leagues. Um, so that means it's just going to be an obscenely powerful item. The other one is like the, the drop of uh, the Tides of Time, which is just an OP belt. It's basically just giving you the Pathfinder Ascendancy on an item. But uh, yeah, anyway, the, I reckon these changes to, I, I guess, uh, target farming farmability of bosses is really unique. There was also a comment made in the Q&A as well that there would be a retuning of mage blood drops. So 2.5 time uh, or a 2.5 time multiplier to the drop rate of mage bloods, which indicates that mage bloods are going to become a little more accessible in the next league as well. And whether or not they're rewards that we get from, you know, doing T17s or something like that is soon to be seen. But uh, if it's got an increased drop rate of 2.5 times based on what was said in the uh, in the content reveal and the Q&A, then that's going to make it a probably cheaper item, very similar to last league as well, which I'm super keen on because who wants to farm up 400 divine to afford a bloody belt every league that's completely build enabling. The other thing is mage blood technically gets a nerf because previously with mage blood, you would stack like your elemental flasks and things like that, that had like the 20% reduced fire damage or whatever. That's no longer in the game or the flasks have been changed which means that Mage Blood is not as defensive as what it once was. Still an uh, absolutely fantastic item, just not as good as what it previously was because of the changes to other items. So it'd make more sense that it was a more accessible item than it previously was in previous leagues to before 2.32, uh, 2.23. Anyway, um, either way, really happy with the change. Looks really cool. And uh, there's a ton of stuff that we're going to get out of that, hopefully. To solve this, we are removing some systems, but are keeping what is good about them. The two main systems we've removed are Sextants and the Master Mission Selector. Okay, so according to the patch notes on Sextants, so basically, yep, they've removed those items. Uh, you can uh, you no longer need to click to do like Alva missions or anything like that, and you can do all the Nico Alva missions and everything all at the same time, which is really good. I like it. It means we can multi-spec the Atlases so that we can do you know, temples and delve or bestiary and delve or um, June and delve, which we could do that anyway, but we could have a pop up in the same map. So I really like that. The other thing with the changes to the scarabs is they're going to be more impactful and trigger those better. So scarab farming is going to be a really big thing this league. And in fact, scarab prices are probably going to go up through the roof. Sextons no longer drop here as I've got it noted in the patch notes. And surveys, com uh, compasses are no longer offered to be purchased by Crack. So off the, this is probably in response to what happened last league with um, with some of the farming strategies that were going on with uh, with Magic Fine. But beyond that point, like the only disappointing thing about this is we won't be able to delve for bulk sextants anymore and then sell them out. But you know, whatever is what it is. It just means that scarabs are going to be where the money maker where the money making is. It is not our intention to dull the content, however. We have completely reworked Scarabs to include most of the options that were previously covered by those mechanics, and many, many more. Let's take a look at some of them. Commonly, you might find Scarabs that simply grant access to different content. 
Here, we have a scarab that causes beyond demons to spawn when killing monsters in your maps. And here, we have one that adds a delirium mirror. Each type of scarab now has multiple versions, so if you want to fully invest in a type of content, you can do so. Here's a suite of ultimatum scarabs. This ultimatum scarab adds an ultimatum encounter to a map. This ultimatum scarab of bribing then causes that ultimatum encounter to grant better rewards and its monsters to yield more experience. This ultimatum scarab of dueling will cause that ultimatum encounter to always guarantee the trial master boss fight at the end, assuming you can survive through all the rounds. This ultimatum scarab of catalyzing will cause all rewards from that ultimatum to be catalysts instead of other rewards. And finally, this ultimatum scarab of inscription will cause all catalyst rewards from that ultimatum to be inscribed ultimatums instead. There are plenty of others. If you enjoy divination card farming, you might want to use these. This divination scarab of curation causes more divination cards to drop for each different favoured map you have selected. But it also causes whatever map you're running to only drop divination cards from those favoured maps. So if you want to try and aim for your mage blood and don't want to just farm Crimson Temple, then this scarab is for you. This divination scarab of completion causes your divination cards to have a 20% chance to drop as a full stack instead, for maximum dopamine. Basically, there are now just a lot of scarabs. You might have also noticed that they no longer have tears. Scarabs are now all world drops. You can get them anywhere. Some might be rarer than others, but the intention is that there will be a lot more options than before, and more interesting combinations to consider. If you want to target specific scarabs, Betrayal has been updated to include most of them, and you will need to relearn which ones come from where. Okay, so the other piece of information that goes party and parcel with that as well is just around some of the new Scarab clusters and the Atlas passives as well. So in the patch notes, they've got three new Scarab clusters to added to the passive tree um, that each have two small passives providing 4% increased Scarabs per the maps found and nine Atlas notable, notable passives that cause the Scarabs in your maps to be 100% more likely to be either Essence, Beyond, Torment, Reliquary, Cartography, Anarchy, Ambush, Harbinger, or Domination Scarabs, which basically means it lets you target the Scarabs that you want dropping, uh, so you can target farm access to those particular mechanics. Uh, also, has added new Scarab cluster to the Atlas Passive Tree with the Remarkable Relics and uh, Chittering Champion nodes. Remarkable Relics causes Scarabs found in your maps to be more likely to be less common varieties, so rarer Scarabs, so like Wing Scarabs, for example. While Chittering Champions causes the final map boss in each map to have a 25% chance to drop an additional Scarab. We're basically all going to be taking Scarab nodes this league seriously. Like, it's going to be the best way to be able to get access to the content that you want to play more consistently. The five small passives in this cluster provide 4% increased Scarabs found in your maps. So I would be saying, and when I have a look at the, PA, at the Atlas trees that we're going to be taking the Chittering Champions causes. Because if we're going to be blasting maps, that's going to be the easiest way to get Scarabs. This is actually going to either increase the price of rarer Scarabs, or it's going to significantly decrease the price of Scarabs. So they're going to be like, you know, you're going to be able to get a stack of 100, you know, Sulfite Scarabs, for example, for like 20 Chaos or something like that, if you can just blast it out of maps. Uh, fourth point here, added a new Scarab cluster to the Atlas Passive with uh, notable significant troves. It provides unique monsters in your maps have a 200% chance to drop Scarabs. Again, <laughs> uh, designed to enable Scarabs to be one of the sig most significant forms of farmability of uh, game mechanics moving forwards. And added a new Scarab cluster to the Atlas Passive Tree with the notable Skittering Swarms. It provides 12% increased Scarabs found in your maps. So basically, like, default, like, you're going to take whatever your mechanic is and you're going to take Scarabs initially so you can get access to the content that you want to play and then eventually you're going to wean out of Scarabs once it becomes less profitable or maybe you might even keep it in there. Considering that Wandering Path is no longer in the tree either, like, it makes sense to have Scarabs in there too. Um, yeah, anyway. So that I'm okay with that change. I don't think that's a bad change. I think Scarabs are really good their content enabling and it's probably the easiest solution as opposed to having this the the master missions which didn't realistically work very well anyway with the accumulation of missions and whatnot so yeah 
While playing through the campaign in 324, you'll notice a myriad of small improvements and surprises. The fundamentals of the campaign are still intact, but we've scattered fun encounters and secrets throughout Rayclast. The Dweller of the Deep has been trapped. What are these ritual shrines doing in the Northern Forest? And why are they giving me omens? This device looks safe. I should definitely use this on my items. There are plenty more encounters to discover. We'll continue adding more surprises in future releases. So keep an eye out. So for these changes, I think this is just basically the answer to instead of putting in a quick leveling system for the campaign or in, you know, removing the campaign to have a quick leveling system in like D4 or last epoch with the arena system, they're simply just making the campaign a, a little more tenable to work through a lot quicker. There's also a, a particular enemy or a, or a, yeah, like a boss sort of thing that pops up with a new league mechanic for Necropolis as well, which allows you to get a guaranteed unique drop which is yet again just another solution to give players access to those early leveling uniques to progress them through the campaign a little quicker. I don't think this is a bad approach to it at the end of the day. We're pretty clear on their methodology at this stage, which is the campaign is going to stay irrespective of what the community says. So this is just sort of finding a middle ground. I don't have an issue with that at all. So just some other changes that I picked up as I was sort of doing the build curation video earlier. Um, which would just be good to know if you haven't run through the patch notes yet. Uh, so I'm not too worried about like absolution of inspiring. This is a buff from what I can see. No one was playing it. Uh, animate guardian of smiting guardian now deals 30% more damage with its smite ability. Potentially this could be good. I uh, don't know how we're going to apply it, but maybe you could make something out of it. Uh, there was an animate weapon build last league, um, but it wasn't really played in any great level. But that being said, it's been buffed anyway. Archmage has now been removed from brands and orb skills, which is interesting. So I think there were a few like uh, storm uh, storm orbs of uh, sorry storm brands of indecision builds and things like that that were using mind over mana and Archmage. Well, that's now been removed, so those builds are now dead. Um, do with that what you will. There'll be some unhappy players most likely. Ball of Static is no longer usable by Totems. There must have been some sort of abuse for that, but it's a really weird change for them to make. Uh, Blade Blasts of Detonate, that has been buffed, from what I can see here, which is good. Uh, Blade Flurry of Indecision, buffed. Uh, Blade Trap of Great Sword. This is interesting. Maybe this might be worth looking at at this stage, because that got a pretty good buff at level 20 by 40%, so maybe that's something worth considering. Blade Vortex of Scythe, uh, that looks like buff. Blink Arrow, um, clones now deal 25% more damage with elemental arrows. Yeah, okay. Yeah, not sure if that's good or bad. Really odd one, Cleaver Rage nerfed. <laughs> I, I don't know why they nerfed that. Like, they just need to leave melee skills alone. They're already not played enough as it is. Uh, Divine Arrow of Holy Lightning. So I tried this last league and it was pretty not great. And they've buffed it by 20%, but it has 20% less AoE. Arguably, like, there needs to be a lot more damage buffing for that to be more viable. Like, it just didn't feel very good, and that 20% is just not going to cut it. So, I don't know. I don't think that's a meaningful change. Dominating Blow of Inspiring. Uh, that looks like a buff up to 250% from 200%. Essence Drain. I don't think anyone's really playing Essence Drain. Uh, explosive Concoction of Destruction. Again, same thing. No one's really playing Explosive Concoction. I tried to get that working a few leagues ago. It just feels bad. Um, it doesn't really scale well. Maybe actually it might be playable with the new belt. Uh, and you could actually play that on like an Elementalist or something like that because you can generate more flash charges now using the belt. So, and uh, what was it? Uh, the Balboa, I think it is. Um gem so yeah i don't know maybe could be playable now uh explosive trap i put this in the curation there's like a bit of offsetting between damage so there's like now 140 percent more effectiveness of added damage from 120 percent and the base damage is increased as well but then there was a reduction in some of the blast radius from what i can see or secondary radius 
uh, from what I can see. So that has sort of nerfed its ability to overlap, but at the same time increased its base damage. So uh, I think there's a bit of push and pull there. So there's some there's some benefits and some disadvantages, but it's not going to stop you from playing it on a league starter scenario. Uh, other things, Firestorm or Pelting, like this could be good. It's sort of like some of the trans gems, the way that they've been constructed, sort of like they just cut the skill into like three parts. So they have like the skill with both parts and then each part to each extreme for the other two trans gems. I uh, just don't think this is a significant enough change, but maybe might think about think of a build that can be used with this. Uh, Flame Surge of Combusting, again, just like not enough. Like nobody's really playing that. It's more a support skill and that's about it. Flicker Striker Power was played on Tricksters last league with Aegis Auroras, so this is actually really good. It's just going to make it more powerful. Maybe a Gladiator build with Int Stacking would work, so conversion to Lightning Damage, Int Stacking with Aegis Aurora with Flicker Striker Power could be an option. Uh, Frostblades of uh, Cat Catabasis, uh, more Dot. Did anyone play it? Not sure. I hadn't checked, but I don't think people have really played it. Uh, Frost Blink of Wintry Blast. This is going to be... Uh, now has this spell's cast time is added to its cooldown if Trigon has 200% effectiveness of more effectiveness of damage. I'm not sure what that's going to actually do. Now has this spell's cast time is added to its cooldown if triggered. So the more you use... Is that saying the more you use it, the slower it's going to get? Because, yeah, this was like a super powerful movement skill. So clearly they've nerfed... This sort of feels like a nerf. Uh, General's Cry has been buffed. So that compensates for the, um, the Warcry gem. So arguably, like, General's Cry builds could actually be really good with Auto Trigger Warcry. And actually, to be honest with you, now that that's more available, if you could get access to more Warcry um, cooldown reduction in the tree, you could play General's Cry with Call to Arms on many more builds than what you are, were able to previously play with. So potentially this is actually a really cool buff, something to keep in, in the back of your mind. Ice Crash of Cadence, uh, that's been buffed like flat, just damage buffing, which is good. Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation, this has been, I believe, nerfed. Yeah, it's been nerfed. Uh, Lancing Steel of Spraying, this looks like it's been buffed as well. Previously 10, scaling up to 8 at uh, level 20. Oh no, it's been nerfed. Lightning Arrow, buffed. Lightning Spire, buffed. Mirror Arrow, just add it in there to be consistent. Uh, Patton's Brand of Dissipation. Now activates every 0.75 seconds, so that's a nerf. 50% uh, effectiveness of added damage, used to be 65%. Now deals 16 to 24 physical damage, so it's been reduced, and the scaling has also been reduced pretty significantly as well. And pulses now deal 30% more damage and hits and ailments per energy after the first, previously 60%. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's been it's been getting alive. I don't think it's gonna be anywhere near as powerful. I think it'll still be powerful. I just don't think it's gonna be anywhere near as powerful. Uh race specters of transcendence. So now has a maximum of four race specters at gem level one, scaling up to six at gem level six. Now these, I think, were like... I, I can't remember if these were specters that don't move or something of that nature. But it, this might be worth having a look at with the um, the new specter helm that they were also playing around with too, like having 10 plus specters. And maybe you could have like stationary specters and you could have a specter bank that you constantly like channel cast while channel specter or something like that similar to like um the old soul rest build except with specters possibly not sure maybe something worth looking at uh zombies uh raise uh raise zombie of falling zombies created are no longer usable by detonate dead not sure what that mechanic was alluding to shield crush of the chieftain there's no amount of change that they can make to this to actually make it good I can't see any way that you can actually make this build good unless there's like a secret mechanic that we haven't figured out yet. You just cannot get that fire damage to scale well enough. Maybe something like strength stacking or something. Armor stacking doesn't work. 
Um, so I'm not sure with that. Uh, shrapnel blister buffed. Sniper's mark unchanged. Slightly nerfed. Slightly nerfed from what I can see there. Spark of unpredictability is slightly being buffed. Base damage buffed. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Stormbrand of indecision. Now has 60% effectiveness of added damage from 85%. So that's been nerfed. So my build from last league for Stormbrand of Indecision is now officially probably dead. Uh, SRS, this was a pretty significant one. I originally had this lined up to go into the curation. They had to remove it because now it has 0 to 38% more added, uh, more damage as it levels has been removed from melee attacks. So it's you could pretty much argue that's been nerfed. Golem of Meteor, Golem Meteor skill now deals 50% more damage and Burning Ground now deals 30% more damage over time. Maybe this could be really cool with um, the Unholy Might, potentially, maybe. That could be something that could work. Uh, Skeleton Archers, I tried to make this build viable last league. They're not going to be able to add enough damage to this to actually make Skeleton Arch Summon Skeletons of Archers actually viable. The biggest issue is there's just like no good ways to balance the damage out on that without insane amounts of currency spend. Um, like we're talking hundreds of divs to even get it close to working. So I just think that's just like a shot in the dark. Like they need to do a lot more fixed work to make that actually good. Uh, Tornado Shot uh, now has attack speed multiplier of 80% from 100%. So that's a nerf. Uh, it now has a mana cost of 10 at gem level 1, previously 8, nerf, uh, scaling up to 12 at gem level 20, previously 10, nerf, yeah, okay, they've, they've nerfed Tornado Shot a little bit, that must have been a focus area from last league, uh, don't really care about Unearth, don't really care about Void, Sphere of, un, uh, of Rending, now pulses 0.3 seconds from 0.4, it's irrelevant no one's really playing it volatile dead after reaching a mass maximum number of orbs at a time the oldest existing orbs no longer explode they are simply killed that's a nerf i would say potentially because if they explode did they do damage if they exploded so that looks like a little bit of a nerf ascendancies as we know they um they did change mindless aggression and they did change bone barrier so this is going to be interesting to see what people do with this. This could either be a buff or it could be a nerf. This sort of actually feels like potentially this is going back to how um, the ascendancies were previously structured. Anyway, is what it is. Uh, yeah, so that's it for skill gem changes. There's a fair few changes in there. Some good, some really bad. Um, yeah. Okay, so still a 30-minute video. I think that's a fair bit of detail. For anyone who didn't really want to read through the patch notes or go through the videos, there's a bit more information and a little bit of my thoughts on some of the changes. Overall, I think the league's going to be pretty good. I am annoyed about the left uh, the, the left mouse click uh, or mouse button one click, but it is what it is. It doesn't really make a lot of sense as to why they would make that change, but they've made it. We're just going to have to work around it, and I'm sure we're going to find new ways to abuse automation and, and call to arms. But anyway, if you like this video, uh, don't forget to like and sub to the channel. Don't forget to follow the Twitch. Don't forget to follow the Twitter or the X account, as it's called now. Um, there'll be plenty more videos coming out over the next few days, and at least two build league starters coming from my channel as well for non-meta builds, one in particular that I'll be playing which is my purifying uh, flame ignite elementalist. But uh, anyway, until next time, I'll see you guys later and have a good one.